OK, so last week, I saw two people really capture what seems to be going on in today's Democratic Party. Take a look. If you're moderate, stop being moderate. Take a position, all right? There's no middle ground anymore. When it comes to the 2020 Democratic nomination process, centrists need not apply. Stop being moderate. Centrists need not apply. <laughs> the Democrats are just going more and more left. This reminded me of something. My childhood. In 1980s Britain, the Labour Party, equivalent to the Democrats, was captured by an extremist left wing. It became known as the loony left. In fact, they became so notorious in the UK that even 60 Minutes here in America reported on it. You may wonder why we've turned Big Ben into a cuckoo clock. Well, the name of the story is the loony left, a group holding power in Britain's inner cities whose policies many believe are aimed at destabilizing both the party and the nation. Loony left policies included massive tax increases, including a wealth tax and a luxury goods tax, nationalization of energy companies and other utilities, labeling local areas, nuclear free zones, discouraging schools from using pictures of teddy bears because they are European and therefore unfair to the children of immigrants. We thought we'd defeated the loony left with Margaret Thatcher, but no, they're back in the UK with Jeremy Corbyn. And unbelievably, it looks like the loony left is taking over America's progressive party too. Just listen to the policies some Democrats have been coming out with. 70% income tax, 90% income tax, wealth tax, gun ban, abolish ICE, abolish private health insurance, abolish the coal industry, abolish the oil industry, abolish the gas industry, abolish the pipeline industry, abolish the fracking industry, post-birth abortion on demand. Ban he and she. Discourage private cars. Block charter schools. Open borders. Cut the US military in half. Abolish air travel. Abolish space exploration. These are not made up. This is not a joke. These are either direct promises or the consequence of other promises. It's not even a full list. My God. We did a quick calculation of the number of jobs these loony left policies would destroy. Get ready. It is over three million. They say their Green New Deal will include a government guaranteed job for every American. It's going to have to, considering the number of private sector jobs it's guaranteed to destroy. No wonder presidential hopeful former Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz, a lifelong Democrat, says he has to be an independent because the Democrats are so extreme. But there is one person who's got to be happy about the loony left takeover of the Democrats, and that is President Donald Trump. Henry, what do you make of it? I think you're absolutely right. And it reminds me, you know, in that 1983 election when the loony left take over labor, you had a centrist party get a quarter of the vote, you had the loony left get 27% of the vote, and you had Margaret Thatcher get a massive majority with a minority of the vote that Marie made the country. Donald Trump, Trump's going to be rooting for this loony left takeover of the Democratic Party, and he's going to try and egg it on over the next year. Americans want, like we've been talking about, common sense, non-ideological solutions. They keep getting promised it. That's what Bush said he was going to do, didn't deliver. That's what Obama said he was going to do, didn't mm -hmm. deliver. Trump's delivering on that, and if the Democrats offer an ideology, Trump's going to win in a landslide. So, well, I agree with that, but Tesla, do you think it's going to keep going up the ratchet, more and more left, left, all the way through the primary, or is someone going to come in, I don't know, Biden or whatever, and someone say, look, this is ridiculous, let's get back to the center where the votes are? What sure they th will. They, they did it during the midterms. You know, a lot of people talked about the left, the left, the left, you know, all of a sudden overnight progressives during the primary, and then you notice when the uh, general election happened, a lot of them moved back to the center. You know, like it or not, most of Americans are in the center. Uh, you know, for people to say, I, I saw Michael Moore the other day saying, you're either with this or you're against this. There is center. That's a lie. Most people agree with one or the other and have some why, it's why I'm independent. It's why I'm not a part yeah. of the loony left. Yes. Um, because I do <laughs> have, have, even I though I work for it, it's crazy bird. Tesla and Figaro is not part of the loony left. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think Tesla right. should be running for office. That's right. Oh, never he again. They do, so much bow, well, they do so much bow when they're begging for me. I would never be, a, <laughs> be an elected <laughs> official. <laughs> but, but people are in the center. People have, you know, I have some conservative views and I have some liberal views. And, and yes. so to keep doing this divide is it's all about emotion, and it won't work during the general election. So, yeah, somebody like Joe Biden or H Howard Schultz, yeah. who apparently uh, everyone is afraid of, had the, who's well, we put get, the we'll fear We'll get to him later. People. Save it for later. Yeah. We're very excited to talk about Howard we'll Schultz. We'll do well. But it's interesting because um, 
I think that's one of the reasons that President that Donald Trump as a candidate had an appeal because he, he didn't come across as ideological right. like so many of the other Republicans. He came across as pretty pragmatic, a problem-solving business guy and so on. And I just think this ideological approach that these Democratic presidential hopefuls seem to be taking, it's a real risk for them. I, I, it's a risk in the general election, yes, but I think it's where the energy is in their primary, okay. clearly. I mean, I, I'm an amateur political scientist. When I mean, you think about we had a very conservative 80s, even in the 90s uh, with Bill Clinton, this was not a liberal presidency, right? This was actually very, quite famously, uh, a moderate presidency, mm -hmm. a moderate president, moderate vice president. And then, of course, you know, even, uh, of course, you have George W. Bush, and even with Barack Obama, there were some things that were, you know, incredibly liberal, but it was sort of a bridge, a step stepping stone to, I think, to where the party is now. And we look throughout American political history, right? It swings back and forth. Yeah. And so what will be interesting to see is we know the mood of the country as it relates to uh, the Democrat primary mm -hmm. is, is very left, is very extreme in the moment. Will the, will the mood of the general electorate be in that same swing of the pendulum um, that we see happen sometimes in American political yeah. history? It's interesting. You see, one of the things that you, you, you've been in, in the sort of background of all this, I've been noticing in the last m month or so, really, Particularly since um, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez, AOC, as I think we're supposed to call her, um, <laughs> uh, who I, her, who I by the way, Good really impressed with. I'm, I don't want to be at all disparaging about her. Mm. One of the things that, that people around her are saying is that she's, there's this thing that sort of Washington wonky people call, call the Overton window. And what that means is, the, the, I don't know exactly where it comes from, maybe you can tell us, but it's about the kind of the realm of possibility for policies, the yeah. kind of things that are on the agenda. And they're saying that just by saying these things, literally by tweeting them, she single-handedly, AOC, is moving the Overton window. Yeah. In other words, mm -hmm. things that previously were thought to be crazy and ridiculous are now being discussed as mainstream. And that certainly was happening with taxes. You know, one minute it was 70 percent, then it's Julian Castro with 90 percent and so on. It seems to me that the first break in that was this week with the re response to... Kamala Harris saying, yeah, we're going to get rid of the private health care industry. It was like, hang on a second, do, is this Overton window moving too quickly? Yeah, I, I do know where the Overton window comes from. It's, it's an old friend of mine who ran a think tank in Michigan, Joe Overton. Wow. But, look at that. You know, we're glad to have you here. Who needs people? But, no, look, there are a lot more moderates in the Democratic Party, but they're mm. silent. You know, if there's a silent majority in the country, which is a centrist sort of voter that Donald Trump tapped into, there's a silent part of, uh, if not a majority, very large number of people in the Democratic Party. And that's who the people like uh, Joe Biden are going to talk to. If Amy Klobuchar runs, that's the sort of person okay, well, I'm going to cut you off to. because we're going to talk about the, the, there's more 2020 conversation later on because there's so much going on.